can you define what a woman is? <laughs> a woman is a woman. Um, the, the main point of it is, as uh, Jordan Pearson always says, uh, it's, it's the whole package that counts, basically. Everything from uh, the, the, the physical attributes to... Um, the, the, the best way, actually, is that if, if someone dies hundreds of years from now, when they um, assess the, the bones and the structure, they're like, well, that's a man, that's a woman. Um, but uh, the rest of it, I'm, I'm a libertarian. I don't care if uh, people want to define themselves as whatever or dress whatever or do whatever, don't really care. Uh, the problem with this is that this is now the, the ideological part of it that's kind of entering the culture. Uh, it's no longer about identity. It's no longer about individualism. It's about um, reshaping um, well, our world and the Western culture. And this is a problem I have that, you know, um, it is always comes from the kind of the leftist mentality. And as we always say, the left always end up eat, eating itself. Uh, until yesterday, feminism was you know, a champion, well, being championed by the left. And now they're attacking feminism. And it's quite fascinating to see uh, the one group that's actually been more attacked than before is women. Because you got, you got sexists from both sides and you got now uh, the, the so-called Antifa going after women. It's really, really weird. Why do you think politicians like Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner, and even some in the Conservative Party even, why can't they define what a woman is? I mean, apart from the fact that they're just out of touch, they, they have not really been um, up, up to date with uh, all this new the wokey stuff that they don't actually know. Second part of it is that because they don't know, and people around them in the, the left-wing Westminster bubble, they, they assume that this is that this loud group. They are loud minorities. Uh, but they believe that they can shape uh, the electorate and the, the votes for the next, next election. They only care because they think they might lose votes. And th this kind of it makes it like, feel sad because if Starmer was ideologically woke, I'd be like, oh, at least I respect him. He actually believes in it. He doesn't even actually believe in it. Or, you know, even the, the Tories who sometimes do it um, is simply a, a reactionary move. And it just makes the whole debate even worse. I agree. And it's received quite a bit of backlash, this debate on what a woman is, what hmm. is gender, especially from traditionally liberal women like J.K. Rowling, who's more like, a, hmm. she's more liberal on things like refugees. And if you ask the average conservative like three or four years ago, what you think of J.K. Rowling, they're like, oh, she's a woke snowflake. Yeah. And now everyone seems to be pro J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Why do you think it's come from this area of traditionally liberal, not just women, yeah. but traditional liberal people, the liberal Democrat type of people, I'd say. <laughs> it, it is interesting. Um, as you say, and I, I mentioned this a while ago, that it, it's a problem for both sides as well. People on the right who are now suddenly um, championing um, <laughs> J.K. Rowling, they forget that she was so annoying on all the other issues until yesterday. And she was she was basically saying everyone was gay in Harry Potter. It started with Dumbledore then saying, well, yeah, Hermione was a lesbian and this one was gay. I'm like, well, OK, so everyone's gay, basically. <laughs> so when it comes to LGBT, she was very, very uh, progressive. Um, but in reality, uh, from the other side, they don't really everything becomes a Puritan uh, that they all have different categories of ideology. So if you have to believe in economic socialism and you have to believe in well, the original feminism, then you have to believe in normal LGB, then you have to believe in the T, and you have to, be, and if you have, if you have one flaw, and you disagree with one of the categories, you're no longer left wing, so you're now fascist. Jacob Rowling is now basically a fascist, according to the left, uh, and it, it, it's the problem is that Jacob Rowling put aside the gen generic political differences that you know I would have with her, like she's a Romanian, I'm a Brexiteer. She's still a classical liberal, so you know that as you said, these are the kind of the old school liberals that still want. Uh, free speech they still want a uh, free choice uh, she's not saying that uh, transgender uh, women shouldn't exist she's just basically saying that don't tell me what to do and, and don't don't attack my feminism do you think transgender ideology conflicts with women's freedom um well ideology of it yes uh, not not as a concept um because again identity is identity you can do whatever you want in, in your personal life um and if if uh, any of these movements, you know, we've had a so many you know, from the decades ago uh, from uh, women's rights uh, to uh, gay rights. And then you have the, the cultural side in the 90s and onwards with, the, uh, for example, the drag culture and so many different stuff that doesn't affect anybody. Um, you know, some people could still have prejudice. Some people could be offended. I don't really care. It's the same with gay marriage. Some people, uh, conservative gay, gay people that, that were offended saying, I don't want to get married. Why are you getting married? That's different to the ideology, as I said. The trans lobby, who um, they, they're not really interested 
in transgenderism. They, most of the advocates are not even transgender, they are allies. And these so-called allies, they are actually taking advantage of people uh, who are part of the LGBT community. And they, they're basically trying to basically bring down the Western st structure. And, and it's, it's quite disgusting because uh, they are promoting victimhood mentality and saying that, uh, well, you, you're all a victim and you're always gonna be a victim. So that means you're gonna have to find the baddie. And who's the baddie? Everybody else. And it's very bad. We hear a lot about trans rights, gay rights, healthcare is a right, everything's a right nowadays. How would you define what a right is? <laughs> all, the, all the rights, the actual definition of a right, we already have them, negative rights uh, compared to positive rights. Uh, negative rights have already, have already been achieved in countries like the UK. And negative rights uh, obviously includes um, the things that you, you, can't, you can't really take away from anybody else. It's, it's, in America, they say God-given. In, in this country, we just say natural rights. Uh, so anything from you know, free speech, uh, having the right to start a business, having the right to you know, get married, these are the rights that you know, you, you're not going to inflict onto anybody else. It's just up to you. Everything else, positive rights, they're not rights because they are uh, essentially entitlements saying that, well, I have a right to free money. I have a right to free cars, to free education, to free healthcare. And that was still okay <laughs> because it was accepted until you know, the last few years, the last decade, because this is the, actually the world we live in in the West where it's, it's a, com a combination of socialism and uh, capitalism. We have safety net, we have benefits. That was still to an extent working, but now it got to a point where when you start from somewhere, positive, uh, positive rights, it, it just, you just set a bad precedent. And now um, anything is going to, as you said, could be a right. Um, for example, I, I, it's my right not to sit in a classroom next to someone who's a capitalist. That person should go to jail. <laughs> it's just going to get to a whole new level. And it's really bad. So on Sunday, when the protest was, there were um, there was this group of people in balaclavas <laughs> and there's this video of them going around attacking like grabbing a suffragette a feminist yep. flag off this woman yep. who was trying to um, get close to the Emily um, Emily yep. Pankhurst statue and they wouldn't let anyone go near it because that's where the original gender critical yep. process was at and when I've asked some of these people who yep. defend these people why do you think this is okay they respond violence is okay when defending rights yeah. and they point to people like the suffragettes who did use more radical measures <laughs> to try and justify that how would you respond to that it's weird because um, even back then um, pankhurst and those guys they were not really supported initially by the commies and the, the, the or Karl Marx's gangs because uh, they were a very specific type of, uh, um, um, by a lot of them, middle class activists. And then also then they got the working class women on their side. And even then, again, we, we can't really advocate for violence, but especially in this world, because we, again, because we've already achieved negative rights. But from their perspective, that those days standards, uh, the violence and more vandalism, or it was more symbolic rather than, start like, assassinating politicians they didn't do that um but that was to um the, the, to achieve the goal of negative rights and again not to say that what they did was right but i'm saying it was more justified than randomly going around and punching anyone who's, 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 who's well, technically a nazi um but the issue is that they were never supported this is nothing new the fact that the antifa were attacking uh, the suffragette activists uh, at, next to Pankhurst's um, statue with the flag and everything. Like, well, that, that's something that you guys have always been doing. The whole left have always been divided. And that's why they can never, win. well, they, normally they don't win elections. They can never win power at the ballot box. So what they do is they infiltrate the culture from you know, academia, media, and the, the whole culture uh, to win the argument in the words of uh, Jeremy Corbyn. And technically, yes, they are winning the argument <laughs> or they have been winning the argument. <laughs> Over the past, so I'm from Manchester, where this took place, and it seems like Manchester seems to be quite an epicenter for this radicalism. Yeah. Like a few months ago, there was this um, pro, there was this meeting to have again gender critical feminism, mm. and a lot of people went around <laughs> um, chanting "Turf scum off our streets, turf get turf <laughs> get for effing turf," and it's just Raise like women, <laughs> yeah. Like that, that doesn't look good. No. Why do you think these people are so radical and aren't open to debate? Why are they so afraid of the opposite side? 
to be fair, as, 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 again, it goes back to the original ideology. Um, it, it was so Puritan, the, the, the whole well, overall leftism, uh, whether it was in the form of communism or socialism or fascism. Uh, even back then, uh, when you look at all the leaders that they have from Che Guevara and everybody else, uh, the main thing that they had was intolerance. And that included, they do not want to be debated. They don't want to be questioned. And especially even back then, when women basically in the West started having a voice and a vote, even back then they didn't like them because women debate. They don't want to, they don't want women to talk or think. And then the same same applies to the, the the workers, the middle class workers. You know, the moment workers are no longer part of the working movement, they they become slightly more prosperous. They don't want to debate them because they don't want them to question the ideology of their Puritan Marxism. Uh, so they've been always opposing any group that uh, thinks for itself. So um, it, it's nothing really special. The one group. Uh, that ha haven't really been uh, uh, kind of fighting back uh, or kind of clashing with them is uh, the LGB, because you got, generally speaking, the two sides of the, the gay community. One are the, the very political kind of active ones who are basically on the liberal left side anyway. And uh, they're all symbolic and virtue signaling with the, uh, you know, the, the pink ponytails and rainbows and all that. And then you've got the other side who are just are more of a libertarian side, whether you call them conservatives or just normal people who are not political or just gay. They just want to be left alone. <laughs> so they don't even get involved to debate with the, with the socialists. So uh, they don't really have a problem there. But there was, again, different groups, whether it's women, whether it's, um, I don't know, foreigners who are now uh, in the West, uh, the moment they question them, um, they, they become an enemy. And, you know, it's always us versus them uh, from their perspective.